Another classical example of a problem dealing with motion in one dimension, especially free fall, is when two objects are involved. In this case, we have one object that's being dropped from a height of 20 meters with an initial velocity equal to zero, so we're just dropping the object. The second object is thrown upward from the ground at an initial speed of 25 meters per second, and the question is, at what height will the two balls meet? So the way you want to do that is you probably want to go ahead and use this equation right here of kinematics because this equation tells you what the height is as a function of time. And assuming that, of course, they will be at the same height when they meet, we can say at that point that y1 will equal y2. We're going to take the case first when they're dropped, when the first ball is dropped or the first ball is thrown up and the second ball is dropped at the very same time. So t is the same for both equations. So we can then write for y1, we can say that y initial for the first ball plus v initial for the first ball times time uh, plus one half g t squared equals y initial for the second ball plus v initial for the second ball times time plus one half g t squared. So now we have y1 equals to y2, and obviously right away you can see that the one-half gt squared cancels out on both sides of the equation because they start at the very same time, so t is equal for, them, for each of them. Uh, in the case of v2, v initial is zero, so that also goes to zero, that cancels out. So what we have now is y1, so y, and y initial one, that will also be zero because it starts on the ground. Wow, this is getting pretty easy at this point. So now all we have left is v1t equals y02. So we have um, y02, that's 20 meters. We have v initial one, that will be 25. So I have 25t equals 20. So t equals 20 divided by 25. So t is equal to 0 0.8. So after 0.8 seconds, they will meet. Now, does that make sense? Uh, it probably does because the average velocity for the first ball is about 20 meters per second, and the second ball is being dropped. So yes, in less than one second, they should meet. So rough order of estimation, that seems like a good answer. All right, so now that we know that that's the time at which they meet, now we have to figure out how high or how low that ball will be. Well, we can go ahead and use this equation right here. Uh, for the first ball, we can say that y is equal to y initial plus v initial uh, of the first ball times time plus one half g t squared. So now that we know what time is, of course, y initial for that ball will be zero because it starts on the ground. So y will be equal to 25 times 0 0.8 plus, or actually, uh, g is minus 9.8. So minus 4.9, because of course half of 9.8 is 4.9, times 0 0.8 squared. So we have y is equal to, so I have uh, 0 0.8 squared times 4.9, make that negative, then we add to that plus the quantity 25 times 0 0.8, which of course is 20, uh, equals, and so that will happen at a height of 16.9 meters. So that's the height at which both balls will meet each other uh, for the first time. Now, what if we drop the second ball one second later? So we throw this one up and one second later the second ball comes down. Where will they meet then? Well, will this ball reach that height after, hmm, I think I'll have to change the problem a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a second example where I will use some different numbers, otherwise I don't think it's going to come out right. So I'm going to take this and make this into another example at a later time, uh, so if you want to know how to do that problem.